Howdy. Before I begin, I just want to say that I don't wish you a happy new year because I don't believe in all this new year stuff. Uh, I think you should be grateful for every single moment that God gives you. And I don't believe in this business of New Year's resolutions because I don't think you should wait until the first of the first month of a new year to make changes. I don't understand why people think that they have to um, put up with their situation until a very specific date that they can start. Oh, I, I, I'll start a diet on Monday or I will turn things around January 1st. Things are going to be totally different next quarter. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I think that the moment you realize something's wrong, the moment you feel that you're not happy where you are, the moment that you um, need change, you should affect change. Maybe you can't go from where you want to be from where you are in an instant, but you can't take steps to work towards where you want to be. And I think that that's what you should always do. Instead of setting some arbitrary date, and giving yourself time to lose that motivation. And I mean, ultimately, if, if you do do that, if you say to yourself, well, January 1st, things will change, and then you don't follow through, it's because you gave yourself time to rationalize, and it's also probably because you probably weren't that motivated or firm in your conviction to begin with. And that's really what you need to work on more than scheduling a time to start. That's, those are just my thoughts on it. But anyway, we're going to read the Book of Helaman today. Well, the first chapter in the Book of Helaman. And I invite you to say a prayer and ask for discernment so that you can totally understand what we're going to cover. Uh, be sure to take notes and then reread this if, uh, if you feel so compelled so you can better understand the things that maybe didn't quite make sense or so that new things can jump out at you. I invite you to talk to a missionary or another Mormon. For a better understanding of the things that maybe you're not getting and uh, if you want to follow along online or whatever you can uh, do so by following the links in the description or you can also use links in the description to download the gospel library app for your windows android or ios device and um yeah yeah please feel free to request a cup of the Mormon for me and let's get started Chapter 1, from the Book of Yilman. <clears throat> and now, behold, it came to pass in the commencement of the fortieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there began to be serious difficulty among the people of the Nephites. For behold, Pahoran had died and gone the way of all the earth. Therefore, there began to be a serious contention concerning who should, be have, who should have the judgment seat among the brethren who were the sons of Pahoran. Now, these are the names... These are their names who did contend for the judgment seat, who did also cause the people to contend, Bohoran, Panchi, and Pacumini, I think. Now they are not all, now these are not all the sons of Bohoran, for he had many, but these are they who did contend for the judgment seat. Therefore they did cause three divisions among the people. Nevertheless, it came to pass that Bohoran was appointed by the voice of the people to be chief judge and a governor over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that Pecumeni, when he saw that he could not obtain the judgment seat, he did unite with the voice of the people. But behold, Panchi, and that part of the people that were desirous that he should be their governor, was exceedingly wroth. Therefore, he was about to flatter away those people to rise up in rebellion against their brethren. And it came to pass that as he was about to do this, behold, he was taken away, or he was taken, and was tried according to the voice of the people, and condemned unto death, for he had raised up in rebellion, and sought to destroy the liberty of the people. Now when those people, who were desirous that he should be governor, saw that he was condemned unto death, therefore they were angry, and behold, they sent forth one Kishkamen, even to the judgment seat of Bohoran, and murdered Bohoran, as he sat upon the judgment seat. And he was pursued by the servants of Pahoran. But behold, so speedy was the flight of Kishkamen that no man could overtake him. And he went unto those that sent him, and they all entered into a covenant, yea, swearing by their everlasting maker that they would tell no man that Kishkamen had murdered Pahoran. Therefore Kishkamen was not known among the people of Nephi, 
for he was in disguise at the time that he murdered Bahoran. And Kishkaman and his band, who had covenanted with him, did mingle themselves among the people in a manner that they all could not be found. But as many as were found were condemned unto death. And now, behold, Pekhimeni was appointed, according to the voice of the people, to be chief judge and governor over the people, to reign in the stead of his brother, Pahoran. And it was according to his right. And all this was done in the fortieth year of the reign of the judges, and it had an end. And it came to pass in the forty and first year of the reign of the, the judges that the Lamanites had gathered together an innumerable army of men, and armed them with swords and with scimitars and with bows and with arrows and with headplates and with breastplates and with all manner of shields of every kind. And they came down again that they might pitch battle against the Nephites. And they were led by a man whose name was Coriantumr. And he was a descendant of Zarahemla, and he was a dissenter from among the Nephites, and he was a large and a mighty man. Therefore the king of the Lamanites, whose name was... I have no idea. Tubaloth, who was the son of Amaron, supposing that Coriantumr, being a mighty man, could stand against the Nephites with his strength and also with his great wisdom, insomuch that by sending him forth he should gain power over the Nephites. Therefore he did stir them up to anger, and he did anger he did gather together not anger together, although I guess they were angered together, his armies, and he did appoint Coriantumr to be their leader, and did cause that they should march down to the land of Zarahemla to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that because of so much contention and so much difficulty in the government, that they had not kept sufficient guards in the land of Zarahemla, for they had supposed that the Lamanites durst not come into the heart of their lands to attack the great city. Zarahemla. But it came to pass that Coriantumr did march forth at the head of his numerous host, and came upon the inhabitants of the city, and their march was with such exceedingly great speed that there was no time for the Nephites to gather together their armies. Therefore Coriantumr did cut down the watch by the entrance of the city, and did march forth with his whole army into the city, and they did slay every one who did oppose them, insomuch that they did take possession of the whole city. And it came to pass that Pekimeni, who was the chief judge, did flee before Coriantumr, even to the walls of the city. And it came to pass that Coriantumr did smite him against the wall, insomuch that he died. And thus ended the days of Pekimeni. And now, when Coriantumr saw that he was in possession of the city of Zarahemla, and saw that the Nephites had fled before them, and were slain and were taken and were cast into prison, and that he had obtained the possession of the stronghold, strongest hold in all the land, his heart took courage, insomuch that he was about to go forth against all the land. And now he did not carry, he did not tarry, not carry, he probably didn't carry either, in the land of Zarahemla, but he did march forth with a large army, even towards the city of Bountiful, for it was his determination to go forth and cut his way through with through with the sword that he might obtain the north parts of the land and supposing that their great greatest strength was in the center of the land therefore he did march forth giving them no time to assemble themselves together save it were in small bodies and in this manner they did fall upon them and cut them down to the earth but behold this march of Coriantumr through the center of the land gave Moroniah great advantage over them notwithstanding the greatness of the number of the Nephites who were slain. For behold, or maybe it's Mo, Moroniah, I think that's how I've been saying it, had supposed that the Lamanites durst not come into the center of the land, but they would attack the cities round about in the borders, as they had hitherto done. Therefore, Moroniah, Moroniah had caused that their strength, that their strong armies should maintain those parts round about by the borders. But behold, the Lamanites were not frightened, according to his desire. But they had come into the center of the land, and had taken the capital city, which was the city of Zarahemla, and were marching through the most capital parts of the land, slaying the people with a great slaughter, both men, women, and children, taking possession of many cities, and of many strongholds. But when Moroniah had discovered this, he immediately sent forth Lehi with an army round about to head them, 
before they should come to the land bountiful. And thus he did. And he did head them before they came to the land bountiful, and gave unto them battle, insomuch that they began to retreat back towards the land of Zarahemla. And it came to pass that Moroniah did head them in the in their retreat, and did give unto them battle, insomuch that it became an exceedingly bloody battle. Yea, many were slain, and among the number who were slain, Coriantumr was also found. And now, behold, the Lamanites could not retreat either way, neither on the north nor on the south, nor on the east nor on the west, for they were surrounded on every hand by the Nephites. And thus had Coriantumr plunged the Lamanites into the midst of the Nephites, insomuch that they were in the power of the Nephites. And he himself was slain, and the Lamanites did yield themselves into the hands of the Nephites. And it came to pass that Moroniah took possession of the city of Zarahemla again, and caused that the Lamanites, who had been taken prisoners, should depart out of the land in peace. And thus ended the forty and first year of the reign of the judges. All right, thanks for watching. That was the first chapter. Uh, come back next week for the next one. Later.